Hi guys, welcome, Darren here, Maths Guru. Really good to see you, thank you very much for following and watching. This video is another in the linear series uh, for the linear relationships and for the maths course. Um, yeah, really cool to see you. If you can do me a favor, like, subscribe, and tell your mates about my channel, and head over to mathsguru.com where all these videos have downloadable notes, time codes, there are exam questions, and so, so much more coming, all right? Uh, what are we doing? We are going to look at the various different types of graphs. So, so far, we've looked at straight line graphs. And we've looked at all sorts of different things that relate to straight line graphs, gradients and intercepts and blah, 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 blah. Now we get a bit more funky, all right? We're now gonna deal with that basics and, and put it into something really awesome. We're gonna understand what the different forms of the graph look like, and I'll explain that, yeah, and how to sketch some of those graphs, yeah? Now as I say, we've done line segment graphs, step graphs, nonlinear graphs. And this is also gonna build a little bit, particularly the next video, on the work you did in the core section. So please don't think in math that you just learn a section and forget it. You do a sack, tickets done. Because actually you're gonna go back to the linear regression stuff. Yep, has your heart stopped? Has it skipped a beat? Don't worry about it. So what we're gonna do is look at the various values of the graph that you need to know. The first one is the value of n being one. And you're like, what on earth do you mean the value of n being one? Well, as I said, we've got the equation y equals k x to the power of n. Now, k is just a number, yes? But then so is n. But in these particular videos, we're going to change the value of n and see what happens. So what I'm now saying is, if I make this value of n equal to one, we have k x. Now, if I was to say let the value of k be one, we'd have one x uh, or two x or three x and we can make them negative, like minus three x. And lo and behold, what I'm saying here is all of those particular examples there are graphs you've met before, they're straight lines. Okay, so when we have that floaty one, then what we really have is graphs of the format y equals k to the power of x, or straight line graphs. And you know with straight line graphs what the value of k stands for. So this value of two, for example, the value of three, and the value of negative one, what is it? It's the gradient, yes? And we can work out intercepts and, and all that type of stuff. Now, obviously, in this situation here, we're not looking at the graphs of y equals kx plus c. We're only looking at the values of y equals kx. So these straight line graphs with gradients going positive and negative and what have you, okay? So that's the easiest type of graph. What happens if you make n minus one? Well, what we have here then, so if we have y is equal kx to the minus one, we know that anything with a power or a negative power, we can move under and it becomes our denominator. So this actually becomes y is equal to k stays on my numerator, and that becomes x to the power of one on the bottom. And we don't normally write anything to the power of one, as you know. So that's what I'm saying here, is that when you have n equals minus one, we generally write the graph as some value of k on x. And again, those values of k can be anything, one, two, three, they can be negative. And again, I've got some examples here. I've got y is equal to one on x, y is equal to three on x, and y is equal to minus one on x. And you'll notice that these particular graphs have a very funky shape. Now, the, the great thing about this is they are color coded. So if we look at the red graph, we notice it basically goes like this and like that, if I've done that the right way around for the camera. Yes, really, really funky. This line here goes on forever and ever and ever and never ever crosses or touches the x-axis. And this line here goes on and gets closer and closer to the y-axis and never touches it. Likewise here, this one goes on and on and on and gets closer and closer to the x-axis never touches it, and it gets closer and closer to the y-axis, never touches it. Really, really funky. Hopefully you'll know why it never touches it, because if we think about it, what is the value that x can never be? And in that situation, x could never be zero, because we don't like dividing a fraction by zero, because we get an undefined, right? So that's why the x value here cannot be zero. There is effectively what we call in methods, and you don't really need to know this, but I'm gonna let you know anyway, it's called an asymptote, right? It's a line that that um, graph is gonna get closer and closer and closer to, but actually never touch in this particular instance. What does the value of the number k do? Well, actually it just stretches it out, 
or closer to each of those axes. So if you notice here, this graph here is the one on X. What is the blue one? It's the graph of three on X. So it seems to move my graph away, it tends to stretch it away. Yes, it's called a dilation. But again, funky. What does this minus one on X do? Well, it actually reflects it. It actually flips the graph. It reflects it in the X axis. So if we look at the graph of one on X, which is the red one, and we look at the graph of minus one on X, actually, they've just been flipped. Pretty funky, huh? What about the graph of N being two? Well, again, we've got Y is equal K X. Now we'll put floaty to, hold on a moment, we've seen those type of graphs. Y equals X squared, Y equals two X squared, Y equals minus three X squared. These graphs are all parabolas, yes? They all have a U shape, right? When the value in front of the X squared is positive, it's a U shape. When it's a negative value, it's an N shape, but it still has the same format, right? These are just awesome, all right? So quadratics, parabolas, fabulous. And again, this, I haven't given the functions here. I think this one here is X squared. I think that one there is two X squared. And this one here is actually minus x squared, where minus again just reflects it. What do we know? There's some pretty funky stuff to learn. The possible y values are all positive real numbers and zero. Now what that means is if k is positive, right? So if k is positive, all of the y values are positive. It's symmetrical around the y-axis. Now what that means is if I was to draw a set of axes, if I look at my graph here on one side, it's an exact mirror image on the other side. He says drawing not an exact mirror image. The graph has a vertex or a turning point at the origin. Now the origin is this point here. So basically the graph will touch the point zero, zero. That's the point, that is the origin. And the minimum value of y is zero and it can turn and it occurs at the turning point. And again, what is a turning point? It's the point that the graph seems to turn. It's another way for the say in the bottom of the graph. So that's when n equals two. How much of this do you need to know? You just need to have an understanding, guys. Right? Don't don't stress and go, oh it's fine. You just need to have an understanding. What about when the value of n is minus two? Well, we now go back to what we did before. We had k x to the minus two, or did I say that anything with a power or a negative power can move to the opposite end of the fraction and because it's on its numerator now, it's gonna to move to the denominator and that just becomes k on x squared. And again, k is nothing more than a number, one on x squared, y can be three on x squared, it can be negative one on x squared. And again, remember the negative, it just flips it. Now these graphs are special because they're called truncus or a trunci, right, for more than one. And a truncus basically has a form like this. So it does that, oh it doesn't, and then it does that. Let's just draw that one a little better. It does that. And again, it is symmetrical around the y-axis, yeah? So it goes that way and that way. Again, it never touches the x-axis it never touches the y-axis for very much the same reasons as I gave earlier, yeah? We can't have x equals zero because what we would have there is we'd have y is equal to k on zero squared. Well, zero squared is zero and we don't like dividing by zero because it's undefined or infinite, it doesn't work. So that's why we don't like that, yeah? And again, what do we notice? This one here would be one on x squared and this one here would be maybe three on x squared, yeah, three on x squared. So what's happened again? It's dragged it away from the x-axis. The green one here is the negative version, is minus one on x squared because it's just reflected it. See, great really. Now the last graph you need to know is this one here where you've got the n as being the flow t3. So here we have y is equal to one x cubed or y is equal to three x cubed or y is equal to minus x cubed. Now I haven't done a minus one on here, but again, this graph here, this blue one is the graph of x cubed and they have again a pretty funky shape. It goes up through zero 
and then up that way again. Now, if we were to actually rotate it, it'd be the same graph. If you rotate it through 180 degrees, you get the same graph. And again, you have to excuse my really, really freaky diagram. But if you're on a computer at the moment or a handheld, if you can freeze the screen and you turn it upside down, you'll notice the graphs look exactly the same. And again, that's a cubic. Now, what do you need to know? You need to know the general form of these things, yes? Why? Well, because you never know what's going to be asked in a further maths exam. But the good point here is there's a couple of questions that now deal with that knowledge. I'm going to fire up my CAS calculator, bring it onto the screen, and ladies and gentlemen, because the question says plot the graph of that equals that, we're going to do it by hand first. We want a table of results. Now it says to allow our x values to fall between minus 3 and 3. So I would now be drawing a graph. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So there's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 1, 2, 3. Now I don't know what my y values are going to be at this moment in time because I've got to calculate them. How am I going to do that? We'll very much use my CAS calculator. Hit menu, add a calculator. Now my formula is basically y equals minus, uh, sorry, one third x cubed. So I'm now going to do, work out my y values by doing, what did I say, one third of the value of x, which is going to be cubed. Now my first x value is minus three. Because my calculator is stupid, I'm going to put the minus three in brackets or it's going to give me a wrong answer. I'll show you why in a moment, yeah? And then I'm going to raise that to the power of three, hit enter, and it gives me minus nine. So my first value there is minus nine. Yay! I'll just show you what happens if I copy that down and don't put the brackets in. Is it going to let me not put the brackets in? Uh, come on, delete the bracket. Nah, let's just do it. So if I had one third, and then I do minus three to the power of three, what do you get? Just horrible values, yes? Right. Firstly, the calculator is so confused. So my advice is to make sure that you do the minus three. Let's just go up and copy that down and actually see what happens if I put a time sign in there and see if that makes any difference. Well, in this situation here, it seemingly has come up with the right answer. Why? I think it's a fluke. My advice is always put the minus sign in. What am I going to do now? I'm going to go back up. I'm going to copy that down change the value to negative 2 and go minus 8 on 3. Oish, minus 8 on 3. Now don't worry about the fractions, we're going to use those. We put minus 1 in now. What am I going to do? Put, change that to minus 1. What have I got now? Minus 1 third. Put 0 in, I'm going to get 0 because 0 to the power of 3 is 0. Put 1 in. Oh, put 1 in. Oh, he says, what am I doing? Oi, 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 oi. Trying to do this too quickly. Put the value of one in. I'm still going to keep the brackets and I get one third. Put the value of two in. And notice the calculator's gone where I don't need the brackets anymore. I get eight on three and put three in. I promise you I'm going to get nine. So that's nice, bit of symmetry for the answers. So we're now going to go down to about minus nine. Whew. Minus, so let's do minus 10, minus eight, minus six minus four, minus two, two, four, six, eight, and 10. Why am I doing this? Simply because I don't have a lot of room, but I've noticed that all my spaces are roughly the same. So minus three, minus nine is gonna be roughly speaking here. Two minus eight on three. Well, I don't know what that is as a decimal. Should we have a look and see what that is a decimal? So minus eight on three is minus to about minus two and a half. So two is about minus 2.5, which is roughly speaking there. One is minus a third, which is sort of there, zero, zero. And then we're just going to go back and do it the other way. And because we know that this graph has the power of a third or three, sorry, power of a three, we know what that looks like. Remember, it looks like that. And so now using that knowledge, I can join those points together. And lo and behold, there we go. There's my graph, yes? Is there another way of doing it? I should hope so. We could just use the CAS. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control and insert, and let's add a graph. I'm going to do one third of uh, x to the power of three. And then it does that for me. Now, can I 
limit that? Yes, I can because I want to put that pipe symbol. Remember the pipe symbol. I want to go from minus three and then going to do my inequality signs, which is going to be less than or equal to x. My inequality sign again, and the great thing about using this calculator at the moment on my screen, it actually shows you the buttons I'm pressing, and hit enter, and lo and behold. Now, that's not fitting particularly nicely, so I'm going to go menu, window zoom, and we'll say fit. And ladies and gentlemen, there we go. There's my graph, all nicely fit on there. Now, how am I going to sketch that? Well, ultimately, when you sketch your graph, you're looking for various things like the shape. Yeah, so the first thing is we can draw the shape nicely because the question's given me that. But can I find examples of, um, can I find uh, particular points? Well, let's do graph trace. And what do we notice? Well, that point there has a point zero, zero. So I can put a zero, zero there. Can I find the point at the very top there? Oh, it's not quite there. Yep, look at that. So we now know that that point there is three, nine. So I can do a dot there. I can do a nine and I can go three and kind of come down the other way just by hitting down, 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 down. Yep, minus three and minus nine. All right, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen, there is a sketch. What about this? How do we do this? Well, this is now turning it on its head. Let's minimize my calculator because we're not going to need it at the moment. The point 250 lies on the graph of y equals kx squared. Now, the trick here is that when they give you a coordinate, they are giving you something in disguise. They're giving you a value of x and a value of y. Oh, yay! So if they give you an equation, y is equal to kx squared, well, what they're really telling you is, for that coordinate and that graph, the value of x is 2. So I'm now going to put a 2 there in brackets with the squared. They've given me the value of y is equal to 50. So under the y, I'm going to put 50. And because it wants me to find the value of k, I'm just going to write the value of k. Can I find the value of k? Yes, because it is the only thing. And again, I could use my CAS and I could use the sole function. But let's just see what happens. We know what 2 squared is. 2 squared is 2 times 2. So that's 4. So we now will know that between the k and the 4 is a kissy kissy, which is a time. So I can divide both sides by 4. And that gives me that k is equal to 12.5. So therefore, my function on my graph actually has the equation y is equal to 12.5x squared. Kerching. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, I know it seems that there was a lot of stuff there, a lot of graphs. You just need to know the general ideas of what they look like. And then, obviously, how to answer the questions at the end. My name's Darren. Thanks very much. Please give me a shout out. Like the video. Um, hopefully, I'll see you in another one. A couple more minutes left of the video. Hopefully, you'll take time to watch it. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.